Hello, this is Cuckoo. Um, I, I'm right here at the NAM Show 2018 at Sonicware's uh, little booth. And they are a, a small company in Japan who just came out with this in, is really interesting little synthesizer and it really caught my attention. So, yeah, I'm eager to learn more about it. Hello. Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm here with Sonicware and I'm going to help introduce the ELZ-1, also known as the ELZA-1. And this is uh, Dr. Indo, who is the main uh, developer and designer. And I'm from Sonic. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, for how long have you been developing this machine? Uh, one year. One year. So from the first idea, or you probably had the idea a long time ago. Uh, mm, uh, maybe two years ago. Uh, and. Uh, uh, a lot of testing and experimentation. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'd like to learn much more about how it works. It looks really uh, interesting to me. Okay, well, it's, it's designed to be very easy to use, but with uh, some sound engines that give you some sounds that are supposed to be very unique. So uh, I will uh, give you a quick overview, and then you can mess with it. It, that's the best way to learn how to use it because it's really straightforward. So I'll give you, tell you first of all some of the features of the synth. Um, it is portable. It does have a built-in speaker. It will run on four AA batteries. The body is made of aluminum, so it's meant to be kind of sturdy. Um, it uses this uh, screen so that it, the parameters are easy to uh, see. It has a bunch of synth engines. I won't tell you about all of them, but I'll explain some of the main ones. It has an FM uh, synth with four operators. It has two different uh, synths that use samples that you can record directly in through the AUX in jack. So we have a sample loaded up in here that we recorded earlier today. This is a, the SI grinder is kind of a granular synthesis engine. Oh, wrong way. This is the uh, DNA Explorer, which lets you kind of choose your part of the sample and, and really dig into that spot. We also have 8-bit um, uh, uh, wave memory with FM modulation. Let me also tell you right now that it has, uh, the controls are very simple. The parameters are shown on the bottom of the screen and you use the four knobs here, the numbers matching the parameters. Moreover, the uh, ADSR is right here. We have filters, and we have some effects. You can get different effects. And it has a basic arpeggiator with all the normal types you would expect, up, down, up, and down, and random. So back to the synth engines. This is a 8-bit uh, wave memory with morphine. So you have three different um, uh, uh, waveforms in here and right now we have some basic you know we have a uh, sine square and sawtooth but we can also choose a user uh, so here we have user one and user one is one that we have edited on this page so you can actually play this waveform as it is but you can also mess with it and uh, change the see if I can make that you can see it's so you can do whatever you, wave table it's kind of a wave table, yep. Um, but you do a, do your own editing of the waves on here. So those are the main um, uh, synth engines. Um, I think the best thing now would be to hear how it sounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think no one's better to do that than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to play around with it. Yeah, so this, this is my first time trying it, so let's just try different stuff.
So this, um, in what phase are you right now with this product? Um, it's, it's near pre-production. Um, anticipate having uh, final pre-production models in May uh, and have it out in shops in summer. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got all the manufacturers you need to produce it? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything's ready to make it. Um, uh, it's really a matter now of uh, getting distribution and um, uh, setting all that up and uh, putting in the orders. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, what what are your di distribution channels right now? Uh, it's all very top secret at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell you that um, the target price street will be 499 US. Yeah. Is this? Would you say that this is the finished design, or are you still making tweaks to the hardware? Um. I, I'm actually, should, we should ask Dr. Indo, but I don't think there's been any hardware changes. I know that there's still some UI uh, refinements to be made and a few other features to be finished. Yeah. Uh, cool. And how big is the company? I mean, it, right now we're at the NAM show. It's a big show, and it was really hard to find this lane. And this is like what I would assume is startups over here. Well, actually, um, Sonicware as a company has been around about 14 years, um, and they do a lot of uh, actually software and app development for other Japanese businesses. But this is the first foray into uh, hardware development. So they have a lot of experience as a company. Um, they have a bunch more people back in Tokyo. So they're actually not a startup. It's There's not, not an issue with the funding. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. And, and the lead uh, developer, he told me that he has a background at Zoom, Zoom company, which I'm using right here. <laughs> so it, this is, uh, it's not like his first stumble into into designing and producing stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to talk to uh, Dr. Indus some more? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to, to ask him a few questions about the journey. Was it a hard, a difficult step for you to go from from being an employee to kind of start to create your own products? The first couple of years were difficult. On a personal level, when you Work in a company, it feels very secure. You know that you get a you pay every every month. But when you start doing your own thing, uh, do, do you worry a lot about the future? あの、ま、社員だったら大体生活とか安定してるけど、独立してすごい心配とかなかったんですか? <laughs> I 
それで食べていくのって結構大変なんじゃないかなと思いました。Yeah, so yeah, of course he was worried at first, and especially worried about instrument development. It can be hard to make a living doing that.、Yeah. Well, I think it, if this is your first、uh, product that you're making yourself, I think it's a, you're off for a really good start. This really charmed me, but the sound and the looks and、uh, the little compactness of it is something I think a lot of people would like to have,、uh, at least with the music that I come from. Uh, like game and the glitch, the, you know, inspired music. I think it's a solid entrance. Very nice. わかりましたか。大体あのだからまあこういうすごい初めての、えー、楽器としてはすごいいいじゃないですかと。あので特にそのローファイとかあのゲーム関係の音とかができるのは彼にとってはまあ嬉しいというかそういうバックグラウンドがある。ファミコンえネスですね。ファミコンが大好きだったネスネスが大好きだったのと MSX パソコンを使ってて昔から8ビットでプログラミングサウンドプログラミングしてたんでそういうのが自分の中の原点にあるんで織り込みました。So yeah, he was really into Nintendo game system and he started programming on MSX and a computer called the MSX and doing music programming even then as a hobby. Yeah, it's really cool. I can really hear the influences from that world, and I appreciate it because it's stuff that I love. I also like the same thing. I really like it. It's really cool. Thank you very much. Please use it. 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 I can see there's a lot of 8 bits and 4 bits, 2 bit influences there.、Uh, what, what kind of bit rate are you operating in, like internally? Naizono bit is a bit of 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 So basically 24, but the 8-bit synth is intentionally 8-bit all the way through. So the different sound effects, like the reverb and the, the delay and stuff, they're actually in higher bit rates, processed in higher bit rates. あのだから FX はもっとあの、えー、高いビットレートでやってるんですか。あ,あ、そうあ、すみませんビットって言ったんですけど、24って言ったんだけどフロフロートでした。ごめんなさい。フロフロート不動小数。どうしようするさあ、さあ、ディトゥビッツのフロフロフローティングポイント、フローティングポイントカルクレーション。フローティングポイント。そう、クラリファイングだよ。ああ、オッケー。オッケー。あ、そう。そう、クラリファイングだよ